My name is Rick Taylor, and I'm a wildlife biologist and associate broker with West and Swope Ranches. And today we're going to talk about feral hogs. Over the course of my career, I've had quite a bit of experience with them. And I've written a book on wild hogs and javelinas uh, that covers the history, the biology, management, and pretty much all aspects of the feral hog. The feral hog, also called the uh, uh, Eurasian Russian boar, Russian boar, Piney Woods rooter, and and to a lot of landowners, other, other names too, not as nice. But anyway, the hog is not native to Texas. Uh, it's actually first arrived in Texas in the mid 1500s when uh, Luis Muscosa came across Northeast Texas with the Spanish exploration. Later on, uh, Robert LaSalle tried to start a colony on the Texas coast in the mid to late 1600s. And then throughout the 1700s, a lot of your Spanish missions had feral hogs, or I should say swine, at the missions. And, but it really wasn't until uh, colonization of Texas with Stephen F. Austin and all of his early colonists came that they really brought the hogs with them. There weren't a lot of fences there. The hogs were allowed to range free. Uh, and then when Santa Ana decided to come across Texas, uh, the great runaway scrape, and all the settlers took off, but a lot of the hogs they let go and were released into the wild. It's probably that group that really started. Then about the 1930s, uh, some landowners actually were able to, to get some pure Eurasian boars from San Antonio Zoo and put some in the uh, southern hill country as well as along the coast. Now these hogs and their counterparts, or I should say the swine and the counterparts, the, the Russian boar, act readily at interbreed and there's probably not any pure Russian boar left in Texas, although the longer a hog stays in the wild, the more they will revert to their European uh, appearance. And the, these intentional releases that were done in the 30s, uh, that continued on with domestic hogs really peaking into the in, or early uh, 70s when hunting became such a really economic uh, benefit to Texans. And so a lot of people were, were getting domestic hogs from the auction barn and releasing them into the wild. And this has happened over the last 40 or 50 years, a continuous release of, of domestic pigs into the wild. And over time, they have reverted back to their more European uh, counterparts. But this is really where this large population came from. And also in the 70s, when, when white-tailed deer management became uh, very popular, everything that landowners and sportsmen had done to improve their habitat for white-tailed deer, the hogs thank you because they have benefited greatly. And with no natural predators other than man, there's not a whole lot of things to keep them in check. The same benefits that, that was created for domestic livestock, like eradication of diseases and things like that, well, you know, the hogs benefited from them. Things that used to keep the hogs in check, you know, that's no longer there. A lot of people ask, uh, what's the difference between a Russian boar and a, a feral hog? And genetically, there's no difference. There are some morphological differences, but they both belong to the family Sudae, and you just have different, different uh, lineages where the Russian boar is still wild and still free-ranging in Europe and other areas, whereas the feral hog uh, is a domestic hog gone wild, but through generations, that feral hog and his progeny will eventually revert back to that original Russian appearance that is still free ranging in, in uh, other areas of, of the world. Over, over the last 50 years, the hog has expanded its population and drastically increased it, its range and distribution throughout Texas and currently can be found almost through the entire state with a few exceptions uh, in areas of West Texas and maybe around some of the urban areas. Uh, estimated population is probably around one and a half to two million and some people believe there's even more than that. There's no way to tell. There's no good way to determine the population of the wild hogs in Texas. For more information on feral hogs, uh, please follow the link at the end of this video and it'll lead you to a short blog or where you can get the book.